Hey guys, what's the best kind of lure for Amazon peacock bass? Stay tuned, we're gonna get right into it now. The best lures you can use to maximize your cast, maximize your outdoor adventure, usually is the typical um, minnow, right? It's, it's about four inches in length. These bass usually hit on bait that's between four to six inches in length so what you want to do is hit right in the middle there somewhere anything between four and six this is about five this is probably as good as you're going to get in terms of um size right you want to keep it just about this or smaller i don't go anything bigger than this i don't use anything bigger than five inches or even if i use it i don't like using it all right um the second thing about this lure, these lures that you want to pay attention to is not only the length, keep it below 6 inches, 5, 4 inches is good. Second thing you want to you pay attention to, this um, paddle in front of the mouth, you want this to stay as small as possible because um, crankbaits, let's see if I have any here crankbaits i don't have any crank here at the moment but um because I, I don't really i don't really use them for peacocks but they have a, a a small body like about half the size of this bait and they have a very big paddle in front of them what it allows them to do is as you crank that bait as you, as you cast and you start to reel they, they push the bait down deeper into the water now the water over here in south america especially in guyana um where i have all of my experience fishing is murky it's black and um, in some cases it's a little muddy so you don't want to get this bait um, with all of these colors too deep down in in the water column because um, it's gonna be hard for bass to see the lure and they actually they, they hunt more with sight you know they see these colors flashing and they and they attack it so you want to keep this bait as close to the surface as possible, right? The way you do that um, is by having a small paddle in front here. So as you crank it, as you reel and you pull, it's going to get just below the surface between 12 to 18 inches you want it. That's, that's about a sweet spot um, in my experience. And you keep it right there and you work it. Second, That's the second thing about these kinds of lures, right? So this is the most popular kind of lure. Um, most of the guys use that kind of lure okay now in my experience this is my honest experience this is not any professional or expert advice or um anything like that some other folks might give you um other advice that's um contradictory to what i'm saying that's based on their experience i'm only giving this recommendation based on my personal experience with um bass the very best lure you can cast for peacock bass is top water popping lures peacock bass is a kind of fish they hunt with their vision right they hunt with their eyesight so they like to see these uh, not too bright colors but at least brighter than the waters around them so they like to see these colors flashing in front of them now in addition to hunting with their um with their vision they actually hunt with sound and, any, and, and movements and changes in the water as well I'm going to give you a story. I'm going to explain to you how I, how I came across that piece of information. So when you have something like this popper, when you have something like this, and this is a very small popper, as you can see, this is just about an inch and a half. It's just about an inch and a half to two inches long. Um, a relatively decent sized peacock bass will come up behind this and just suck it into their entire mouth. And then they're going to take it. So don't underestimate the size of this, of these um, small top water popping lures right what happens the, these um these uh, these holes at the side of the of, of the lip of the lure and this the way it's built like a cup as you as you crank it as you cast and as you pop it it splashes the water it was it, it just splashes the water at the top and every time you reel you give it a little jerk reel give it a little jerk reel give it a little jerk every time you do that it splashes the water now that sound that these popping lure makes is extremely attractive to a peacock bass. Um, basically, any splashing in the water 
alerts them and it just sets them into hunting mood um this is how i learned that a few years ago i brought about nine decent sized peacock bass down from Essequibo um and i had them in a big tub at the back of my yard uh, about 60 gallons at about six of them they were they weren't going to spend long in there they're just going they're just going to stay there for a couple of weeks and then i'm going to ship them out to their um to their new owners right anyhow one day i was just um i had about let's say about four or five decently sized one and then one really huge one of them was he was about four or five pounds um and one day i was just taking some water and splashing it in oh the rain was falling the rain was falling so what i was trying to do is to get some of the rain water into the tub and let that flush out some of the old water that was in there um just to keep them fresh you know and as i pour the water from a bowl into it and as it makes that sound a splashing sound all of them just just went into a frenzy and started pop you know hitting on everything they see even smaller fish in the, in the tub they're just hitting at it um and they knew they're in captivity they can see me it's a small tub there and they can see me i'm right there i am the one that's making noise in the water and they're just going into a frenzy every time this water hits every time the water splash and hits the top of the water they're just going to frenzy and start attacking whatever can fit in their mouths okay so you get a top water popping lure right when you come down here um or when you plan to go fishing you get a top water popping lure and work it at the top of the water splashing that water in front of it that's gonna maximize your um, chances of catching some really big peacock bass now thirdly frogs top water frogs now everything that I just said about this is true about this but there's one advantage to this over this so most of the guys use this or something like this some of the guys use something that pops at the top of the water like this and everything that's true about this is true about this but this has one advantage the advantage this has if you look at this six hooks are exposed right it's two treble hook two treble hooks right if you cast this a little bit too close to the corner it's gonna get snagged a lot so you have to prepare to do a lot of um opening out your tangles when you get tangled up in a bush and what's not the advantage of the top water frogs um there's two kinds right there's this one with a smaller pointed mouth and then there's there's some of them the mouths are shaped like this and they splash the water a little better but this one the belly is designed to do a little bit of splashing also it works just as well right all right the beauty about this is that you can cast this into any bush any bramble any plank any obstacles any rock any tree you cast this anywhere and this is just gonna walk its way as you work it and wrap around all of those posts and come out back free 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 so this will allow you to get into the places that you won't want to go with this or this so this is the best in terms of the popping front this is the best in terms of getting into those hard to reach places where peacock bass like to just lie and sit and wait for something to pass now i observe this kind of behavior a couple of years ago when um i brought a peacock bass for um one of my friends he had a big pool probably about a 2000 gallon pool um on top of his house uh, on the roof there's a big pool on top of his house and he, he had a built-in filter system where he had this submersible pump just pulling water out into a big 45 gallon drum and then pushing it out back after it's being passed through the filter media in the in the four or five gallon drum and it it's it come it comes out of the drum with such force that it creates a kind of a circular motion in the pond in the pool that he had so it's just a lot of force it's, it's like every it's, it's it's just like the rapids some of the areas you're gonna go to fishing in um, Guyana especially here and uh, most places in Brazil you have a lot of rocks 
when water is as low as it is now there's a lot of rapids fast moving water and that's the kind of environment that peacock bass like to stay in now what i observe when i put this bass in that pool he went to the spot where the water is flowing the hardest just under the outlet for the um, the external filter just under there where all that force is pouring the water and he sit right down at the bottom there um, wedges wedge himself between two rocks and he just stayed right there in all of that force so in the wild in the Essequibo River um, in some of those other rivers that you're gonna go fishing that's where they go they want to be close up to the fast flowing waters they want to be close up to those rocks or wood or stump or you know brush or bush or whatever it is any obstacle in the water they want to be cleft right in there and they want to be as close to fast moving water any rapidly moving water and you're going to be right there you need this guy you need this guy to get you into those brush and into those bramble get you in there and get you out back safely you cast there retrieve as fast as possible you're gonna lure them out of, of that brush and then they're gonna be in attack mode as long as that water is splashing you're gonna be in attack mode hey if you guys like this video and you like what you're seeing please hit the subscribe button anyway let's go on to the second part of this video what I want to talk about most of these lures come with a split ring in front of them you can buy these split rings right at any outdoor store or any outdoor fishing shop any fly shop and you can purchase them online right you can purchase these split rings online um, what these allow you to do is to get good action out of the lure without it being hung up on the on the line that you use all right check the link in the description we're gonna have links to those split rings and all of these lures that I have showed you in this video but what I want to show you guys is a decent way to tie your line to these split link split rings all right this is one that isn't tied as yet and this one is already tied all right I want to show you guys a nice knot that allows you to tie your line to this lure right in such a way that it doesn't obstruct the movement of the split ring right and the split ring doesn't obstruct the movement of the lure when you're cranking it through the water all right so let's go let's go we're gonna do it with this one so if you observe right all of these um all of these split rings have a point where the two wires are loosed see that point there this is the point that usually follows the movement of the lure if you tie your line on any one of the double um wire so what you want to do you want to get your line on this single part just between these two joints you want to get your line there right and what that does is that allows that that joint part to be in front of the lure um kind of like this so it doesn't foul the movement of the lure as you pull it and as you work your rod in different angles all right so i have a little bit of mono here i just want to show you guys this not really quick this is one of the strongest knots you're going to ever use to connect your um line to your lure all right so what you want to do first is pass it through the split ring all right you pass it through your split ring and adjust the split ring so that the line passes just where the wire breaks off right so that's where you want to that's where you want your knot to hold and you pull it away like about five or six inches all right snap this part with your finger and change hands so now you have 
hit your tag end facing back to the lure okay you keep holding the two lines right the, with your two finger in your right hand or if you're left hand or hold it in your left hand and with your other hand you start to wrap right and you wrap it like this one over under two over under three over under four all right i'm gonna just make a little bit of space here okay over under five over under six get a little bit more space there over under seven all right so that's seven reps right you can go as much as 13. okay so i'm just gonna make it such that i can hold it switch hands again right and i take the tag end and i pass it through the loop that was what just now in my right hand right and then here's the secret to making this not work all right you draw it down as slow as possible so you have something looking like a hangman's knot there right and then make sure it's aligned right back at the join between the split rings and then you just draw it down all the way down now the way this knot is designed right is that the more force is put on the line the more it binds down on the split ring so this is one of the strongest um knots you can use on um on your lures okay and then the next move is to just clip this tag end off so you're gonna do that real quick you're gonna clip this off right good best not to connect this lure to your line now part two all right let me just clip this off so we're gonna do another knot i want to show you guys a second knot let's say you have a lure um this is a segmented lure i don't really um like using it for peacock bass other species of fish probably it goes so deep it's good for other species of fish tiger fish and, and um some other unskilled catfish anyhow so we don't have a split ring on this lure we don't have any hooks but just ignore that because the what i want to focus on is the split ring in front now in the case of not having a split ring like the frog right i don't have a split ring but a kind of a knot that i used allows me to still get the action out of the frog as if it had a split ring all right so i want to show you guys that knot also all right so let's go so you don't have a split ring but you want to get um a, a little eye at the end of your line so that you get a little bit of action when you're cranking your bait all right so this is how you start it first make a little knot like this okay that's the first move very first move all right second move pass it through the eye of the lure right now third pass it back through the knot that you just made so it's kind of like a um a clove hitch something like a clove hitch knot right and then you draw this in to determine how big of a loop you want on your lure right and then you take the tag end and you wrap it around the line once or twice and then pass it back through the knot right now you cinch it all down slowly the way this works slow is slow is for gold right you go fast you're gonna ruin this knot any of these knots that I've shown you today but you go slowly it's gonna it's gonna work out well okay so let's go all right and then you draw this in and you bind it off there so what happens you clip off the tag end all right so tag end is clipped off right this um 
This knot doesn't draw down. It doesn't draw down. So it maintains this little eye here. Maintains this little eye here, right? So you can still get action out of this lure as you're walking it. All right, guys? I don't even know what these um, knots are called. I learned so many knots when I was a scout years ago, when I was a child, when I was going to school. I joined the St. Margaret's Scout Troop, was led by um, a captain in the army. We learned a lot of survival tips, we learned a lot of knots, we learned a lot of bushcrafting skills and all of these things. Um, I forget most of the names. A lot of these knots I learned after words of course some of the basic knots i learned then but some of these i learned afterwards but um this is perfect so if you find yourself in a jam you find yourself without a split ring don't worry about it refer back to this video and try this knot out all right hey if you um if you like this video and you like what you're seeing please give me a subscribe and check out the links in the description and um we're going to have links to all of these lures and um, some of these um, split rings and some of these hooks. So that when you get down here, you can maximize your outdoor adventure. Alright guys, thanks.